Hey guys, how are you doing? So I just made this website which actually has four pages. So I was asked by someone in my university to make this website without a jQuery support or any um, anything that's related to make this more interactive. But when I uh, went on to make this website, I found something new in here. So it's not exactly new, but my way of making it was quite new. So I thought I would make um, a tutorial on this. I guess you've heard about this um, website uh, website using uh, database support. So database traditionally used the SQL language or the structured query language. And there is another newer form. Nowadays we see it's called the NoSQL. So if uh, NoSQL is being implemented by the MongoDB team and there is also the CouchDB team. So they use the JSON data format to implement the NoSQL database support. So these database supports are usually like collections. Uh, they're more similar to your traditional SQL uh, database supports, but they are a little different. If you're familiar with the JavaScript language, then obviously it's going to help you in that because they are using JavaScript to um, to to implement the JSON data format, and they're also using it, this data format to implement the database support that's called NoSQL. So if you go to um, MongoDB. We'll find all the supports. So MongoDB is actually running on something called um, Bison. But if you want something purely running on JSON or using the uh, uh, JavaScript um, programming language beside um, beside the uh, JSON support, then you can try out Apache's CouchDB. So both of them are actually implementing the um, data structures that are built with JSON and it supports the JavaScript program language. So the new thing that I came up is that when I created this website, I created four pages. So um, I was actually asked to make four pages with all those footer uh, links and the social links. Then obviously there needs to be a gallery and also there needs to be a page for services so these links i mean this list on the left hand side along with this section is actually dynamic dynamic in the sense it's it's using php uh, to interact with the server so to create this website you can use bootstrap because i'm also using bootstrap in this sense because i want to make uh, this site user friendly and I also wanted to make this mobile friendly so um, I'm using Chrome and if I inspect this element and if I hit on Apple iPhone 4 and I refresh the page so you see that it's quite responsive it's actually very responsive although this button doesn't work because um, I have disabled the J, uh, JavaScript and the jQuery support. So nonetheless, it's responsive, and which means it's giving me the ability to make it more mobile friendly. So this is actually this elements are responding to the changes in the resolution. So let's get back to our original shape, and I'm using this Bootstrap. If you um, Google to Bootstrap, and if you um, open up this link, I'll be posting this link. On the description below so please check it out um, you will find all those elements all the styles built in here and you can um, straight away download this by clicking on download bootstrap I'm also using an IDE called Aptana Studio 3 um, you can it's actually um, free which means it's open source you don't need to pay anything for this and you can download this as a standalone version for your Mac. I'm using this on Mac, and you can download this also for as an um, as an Eclipse plugin. So you also need um, 
in Mac, you do have PHP support. You can actually uh, see that that by open up, opening up your terminal like this. And if you write PHP, it will take some time. Um, let's write help. So yeah, when you see all those um, flags, all those options, it actually means your PHP support is enabled in your Mac. So um, you can write something like this, PHP S localhost and a port number to test whether your um, whether whether you can run a PHP server on your computer. So if you really can't run a PHP server or your um, from your terminal, you can actually download this XAM server, which will do the same thing as if you're running it through your terminal. I'm actually running my server through my terminal, and it's on my Acton Studio. You can do the same thing because Acton Studio comes with a built-in terminal that's uh, that's linked to your computer. So I'm running this server. And why I'm using this in Aptona because it's actually showing me whether the uh, interaction between the between my website and the server is being successful or not. So if it's successful, there is a status code of 200. So when I fetch or when I click on, um, suppose, let me get back to my website. So if I click onto this gallery, you'll see a change in here. So let, let me get back to my program and let me click here. So when I click this, it's actually bringing up all those pictures, all those resources from uh, somewhere else. I'm actually bringing up these pictures from the internet. I'm loading them live from the internet. And I'm also loading these icons, these social links, uh, icons of the social links from my directory. So if I get back to um, if I get back to my uh, uh, terminals server, then there is this gallery. I clicked on this gallery. It's bringing up the gallery.php page. You can see that in here, gallery.php page. Then it's uh, bringing up the CSS style and the style that I created. It's also bringing up the um, it's also bringing up the images, images. These are actually images, images for the social links. So this, it's uh, because it finds those resources, the Facebooks, um, icons, the page, the gallery, the PHP page, and also these style sheets. It's actually telling me that uh, that the request was successfully processed, which means. The status code 200 means it's a success. But if I get something like um, maybe if I change it to something, uh, so something to a resource that doesn't exist, maybe if I create a portfolio, if I provide a portfolio link, portfolio page with this resource was not found, it will show you something like a status code of. 404. 404, or uh, it means uh, 404. Um, it actually means that your request was invalid, which means there is there's uh, there was no such thing and there was no such file as portfolio.php. So it was the request was unsuccessful. My website, um, my server is actually looking at my website and it's looking into the folders. So when it doesn't find the specified file like this portfolio.php in here, it's going to uh, send me a not found status code. In on my browser, I don't see any status code because it's it's made for users to understand. A status code of 404 wouldn't mean anything to a user. It would mean something to a developer or a programmer, but to uh, to a general user, to a general visitor who visits your site, we don't understand what's the meaning of 404. So, uh, it has been translated into a human language, and it's telling me that the resource was not found. But in my server, when I look in the back end, it says invalid request, and it throws 
a status code of 404 which means the resource was not found when the resource or the page is found it will throw um, a, st uh, a status code of 200 so that's why it's more of uh, it's more advantageous to run a server inside your terminal because you get to know what's going on or what's what, what was wrong with your requests so